Ciao mondo, hello world, hola mundo, hello mon, konnichiwa, ni hao. We're here in Vicenza struggling with the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, still uh, a lot of patients, still uh, a lot of patients in the ICU and some patients uh, with cytokine storm. Today, Cappuccino is devoted to some suggestions that I can make uh, that many people have asked from all over the world. What are my criteria to start uh, cytokine removal and hemoperfusion and CRRT in COVID-19 patients? Well, first of all, I tend to look for deranged inflammatory markers. Patients severe in the ICU that display high interleukin-6, CRP, lactate level, low albumin are candidate for this. These are patients with high SOFA score and often we look for patients that have high nephrocheck biomarkers. Also, we need to have some clinical data that include the need of vasopressor. This describes very well hemodynamic instability. And some of these patients may also have AKI, oliguria, and fluid overload. Now, these are the criteria. Now, the question is, how do I uh, operate uh, cytokine removal? Well, we have different tools today. First of all, in case of high procalcitonin and high endotoxin activity assay, in case uh, there is a superimposition of bacterial infection, we use uh, two sessions uh, uh, in two subsequent days for endotoxin removal with polymyxin B hemoperfusion. For cytokine removal itself, uh, uh, we use one or more of the following tools. We have uh, the hemoperfusion with Jaffron HA380 and we do daily sessions of four hours for three, four days. Hemoperfusion with cytosorb, again, daily four to six hour sessions for three days at least. And then we have the possibility to use septex, which is a high cutoff membrane for 72 hours continuously, or CRRT with oxyris, which is an AN69 adsorbing membrane, polymethyl metacrylate, which is an absorbing membrane, and also with the recent Terra Nova, which is a medium cutoff membrane with high capability of removing cytokines. In these cases, we use a blood flow higher than 150 milliliter per minute, heparin of at least 10 units per kilogram per hour, and we manage antibiotics, uh, making sure that uh, we are not absorbing antibiotics and underdose antibiotics in our patients. Finally, my suggestions for TRT in this case are please use the system which is familiar to your team, ICU team and nurse team so that you don't have uh, 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 a lot of troubleshooting required. Second, minimize variation in prescription. Make sure that uh, once uh, the nurse has uh, set the machine, the machine should run at that uh, uh, parameters. Maintain CRRT machine in the COVID area. Do not change machine in and out. Make sure the catheter is adequate. We use Niagara catheters because patients often require pronation. So you need to have a catheter that provides the good blood flow even in prone position. Possibly prescribe CVVHD. You know that I believe in convection, but in this case, CVVHD minimizes filtration fraction and limits uh, the risk for uh, coagulation of the filter due to excessive hemoconcentration. Modulate, in fact, anticoagulation. Patients of this uh, uh, infected with COVID-19 are uh, presenting very high hypercoagulability. So most of these patients may require 10, 15, or even 20 units per kilogram per hour. And finally, plan a fixed net ultrafiltration, allowing your intensivists to manage balance with infusion. I think these are very simple, very simple uh, suggestions, and they simply describe what we do. We all have problems, 
we all have uh, uh, need for uh, uh, following the patient uh, with personalized care, but these are simple recommendations to try to minimize uh, the workload of uh, ICU teams and nurses that in this moment is tremendous. With this, I thank you very much for following today Cappuccino from Vicenza and hopefully you will have a wonderful day even struggling with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Excellent.